and Mr. Griffith for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. All right, let's get back into this, and we'll pick up right where we left off with uh, Mr. Pompeo, because I'm trying to figure it out, and I don't think that, that the intent of this bill is to do any of the things that you think its intent is or that you were trying to imply that Mr. Pompeo was saying it's going to do. I think it's regulating farm dust. That being said, would you all support this bill if you changed on line 15, page 3? Do you have the bill in front of you, ma'am? I do have it in front of me somewhere. Yes. I have it. If you changed on line 15, I'm not speaking for the patrons, I'm just asking. On line 15, if you changed the or to an and, wouldn't that resolve all of your semantic problems or all of your language problems? I, I'm really not prepared at this time to negotiate the bill. What, what I will say is that I think that in... in um, well, look, just look at, the plain lang look at the plain language of the bill. If you put an and there, there's no way anybody on earth could interpret that that would allow mining. Isn't that correct? I do, I do not know the answer. I can, I can certainly right. go back and take a look at it. All right, let's one, talk about this. Could, the, the could I just point out one of the confusing things in the definition? It, it I'll really, take back my time, ma'am. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, you know, I think most of us over here were offended by the fairy dust comment. And I was concerned about it enough that I got uh, Representative Hurt to bring me his language. And apparently in his district, there was a farmer who's already been warned by a state regulator. Now, you indicated you, didn't, you weren't aware of state regulations in Virginia. And I'm happy to share those with you um, if you would like. And these are the regs, not the underlying law, but the, the regs in Virginia, which talk about fugitive dust. And I guess what I want to know is, is that based on your earlier testimony, my impression is, is that you all have indicated to the states that this is the direction that they should go in. Is that not correct? You've indicated to the states that they should be regulating fugitive dust from agricultural sites. Is that not correct? Not that, not that I am aware of. In, in fact, when we, even in the coarse particle standard, are monitoring that we, that we base our non-attainment decisions on, uh, it is focused on urban areas. It is both focused on where there is the highest levels of, of pollution as well as where there's most population exposed. So we do not focus on rural o o areas as we implement that standard. So but I'm not as sure you've indicated, the, But as you've indicated, as time goes by, if, if there's a coarse particulate matter issue, you, you all are going to go in and regulate that. And I, I guess one of my concerns is, is that in regard to another set of regulations, not this one, back when I served in the Virginia legislature on the, on the Virginia Joint uh, Commission on Administrative Rules and Regulations, we had an issue that came up, and it looked like it was Virginia enacting something that we just thought was foolish. And when we pushed on it, they said, well, we've been told by the EPA we have to do this. This was stormwater management. And uh, we, we said, well, bring them in. And the EPA came in and basically said that, you know, Virginia didn't have any rights even outside of the Chesapeake Bay area and that they were going to force us to do it one way or another. Uh, and so I want to know is, are we dealing with the same kind of situation with dust? Are you all going to tell the states that they have to do this? Or are you all going to come in and tell them how to do it? Um, this is a national ambient air quality standard. That means that when, when states are implementing the program, they make their own judgments about what's cost effective in terms of an implementation strategy for their states. Mm -hmm. And to the extent that it is, is, is lawful, EPA respects that judgment. Since this bill only at this time only uh, has a one-year time limit or time period in it, and you all have indicated that you're not planning to go forward with any new regulations on agricultural dust. Why the opposition? Why don't you join in and, and support Ac the bill? Actually, it has two sections. The first uh -huh. one is the one that talks about a one-year limit, but it's really not limited to coarse particles. It really spills into our ability to regulate fine particles. And Section 3 really attempts to exempt nuisance dust from regulation altogether. And because of how broadly that's defined, it can certainly leak into all areas of the Clean Air Act and prevent us from, be, from being able to maintain the kind of health standards we've had for decades and the protections that the American people expect. But you do understand why people, as, as Mr. Gardner pointed out and others, why people are a little gun shy when it comes to the EPA, because we've seen things that don't make sense and we've had, in, in fairness, the states have been uh, run roughshod at times by the EPA. And 
and uh, so when we hear some of these things, we don't always necessarily uh, feel comfortable with it, and we have to. We may, we may at some point reach a level of trust, but we're always going to have to verify. Thank you. I yield back my time. This time, uh, the chair recognizes the gentlelady, McMorris Rogers.